51. David Pearson en route to start him. He's driving John Massoni's number three, crew chief by Ray Fox, when the Pontiac cuts down a tire with two laps to go. Fox is upset until he sees the checkered flag and the Daytona Kennel Club Pontiac wins the World 600. Pearson's first win. First-time winners this year, a couple of 25-year-olds in Atlanta. Flipper, Carl Edwards for Roush Racing, and then for Ray Evernham Dodge, it was Casey Kane pulling into victory lane after six career second-place finishes. Finally came in first, Brian Vickers hoping to do that. And as we look at drivers, in fact, 11 years ago tonight, it was Jeff Gordon who won back in 94, Bobby Labonte, Matt Kenseth, first-time winners here as well. Brian Vickers is going to join that list. He's got to stay out front for 68 more laps. That will include one more pit stop. And the number of contenders has dwindled by one. Dale Jarrett had a tire issue and had to pit under green. And the problem is, yeah, it felt like he had a vibration like a loose lug nut. He pitted back on lap 328. So he cannot make it to the end even by pitting here, Dick Bergen. Well, the real problem with that wheel was that the wheel actually cracked. You can see there how the wheel has cracked around where the stud was supposed to go in and also around the circumference of the wheel. So he had a real serious vibration. Any questions? Can he go to the end? We'll have to find out, Larry Mack. Billy Wilburn tried to give Dale some encouragement after he left the pit. Sorry, keep digging. 4,000 all the way out. 4,000. All right, just hope this thing goes green. We'll cycle through. We'll make us a pit stop there. Get this track position back. What he means by cycle through is everyone has to make that green flag stop, which a lot of guys will have to make that stop in about 15 to 20 laps. Needs that without a caution. And that will be a tall order with the frequency of caution flags we've had tonight. 100 miles left to race. This is it. This is what separates the Coca-Cola 600 from all the other races on the Nextel Cup Tour these last 100 miles. Well, here's two guys that uh, I think they're fighting over numerical order. That's the four and the five. They get together down here in turns one and two. Both of them continue on. And then, and then moments later, In turn two, Kyle Busch got into the back of Mike Wallace and kind of pushed him around the corner just to show him his displeasure. And they were battling for about the 25th position. Remember, Kyle Busch in the five seemed to be down a little bit on horsepower. The reason he's back there, Tony Stewart continues his march to the front of the 20 car. He goes by Rusty Wallace. That's a battle for 13th right now. No longer a battle. Now, we haven't seen Stewart in the last 400 miles. In the first 100 miles of this race, he was all-star material. And then he kind of faded back into the middle ground, and we haven't seen much of him, and here comes Tony back toward what? Well, you know, one thing that's happening is the cars are all strung out around the racetrack now. So we don't have a lot of aero issues, I don't believe. I think that's helping some of these guys. It may not help our leader, Daryl, because look where Brian Vickers is around turn one. He is catching a group of about 10 cars and negotiating that traffic. He won't be in clean air like he likes. No, but I, he is so far ahead, he's got no pressure from behind. Jeff Gordon's about, uh, looks like four or five seconds back. And uh, Vickers' car is pretty good, pretty good wherever he wants to put it right now, seems to me. You talked about this last 100 miles. I know Ricky Rudd had that engine problem a little while ago. Kyle Busch is having a problem, but this is where the engine guys get on pins and needles, these final 100 laps, because we're going to see speeds after these guys put fresh tires on, speeds like we've not seen any other portion of the night because the track is so much cooler. See there, Vickers can go to the bottom. Here's Carl Edwards going by uh, Jeremy Mayfield. First time he's been in the top 10 all night, so he's made a great recovery. Edwards in the 99. He's a late bloomer, you know. Don't forget Atlanta when he came here. We didn't see him all day long. The last uh, 20 laps of that race got up there and won it. So that'll put three Roush cars right now in the top 10 here with 100 miles to go. How 
many laps did he lead at Atlanta? Gosh, one. I think it was just one. I think so. It was more of about a fourth of a lap. <laughs> right. That was one of those. Uh, that was one of those. I think I can. Casey Kane in the nine car, sitting there in the ninth position right now. The two drivers this season that have scored their first career Nextel Cup victory are Edwards at Atlanta and Kane at Richmond two weeks ago. I think we just had another car go by here, Larry, that sounded really flat. That car right there. Scott Riggs in the 10 is running in the fifth position. We talked about first-time winners. We know Brian Vickers would like to become that first-time winner. Scott Riggs in the 10 would as well. More Hendrick power. Uh, and it sounds very similar to Vic, uh, to uh, Kyle Busch's car. Got a flat sound to it. You see Greg Biffle in the 16 just drives by him. Yes, he came by us right there. You could hear it. Right now, this race, for the first time all night, for the most part, has that look of a green flag run here as we have 58 laps to go. I said it a while ago, I just think that final pit stop, no mistakes, no speeding, no loose lugs, that could determine who wins this race or who loses it. Now, there's so many things to consider. you got to get on pit road, and that's not an easy task with that sealer on the uh, entrance down there. It's real slick. got to get on pit road, and then you got to get all the lugs tight. seeing about half of these cars come to pit road in about the next eight to 12 laps and then the other one should be far behind as they pitted on lap 308 the other one's pitted on lap 290. Biffle and Sadler you saw the gaps to race leader Brian Vickers. There you see the fuel window on the 300 cars getting awfully low boys four tires adjustments get that fuel. 